You wake up, you get to work, and you go about the day. The motions, the same drive, the same end goal, and the same spots. The world feels small. Ask yourself, do you feel accomplishment or a lack thereof? Did the win feel unearned? Or did it just feel like it didn't matter at all? Does it all just feel boring? It could be because you feel lost. Maybe you feel as though the direction you're headed is just monotonous and single note. It just feels aimless. Or maybe it's a different problem. Maybe you're knocking everything you want to out of the park. It could just be too easy. I definitely relate to both of these things, and believe it or not, they go hand in hand despite the fact that they sound like opposite things. I've had periods in my life where it's felt too easy and stagnant, but I've also had periods in my life where it just felt like I couldn't really make any progress, couldn't get anywhere. Either way, the world felt limited. Life just felt boring. Right out of college, I ended up getting a job in Iowa, and unfortunately, there's not much to do in Iowa, despite the fact that it was a very comfortable, good-paying job. Now, I did make the most of it, and we can get into the details a little bit later, but it felt very comfortable. It was so comfortable that I started to feel uncomfortable. And it feels weird to say, every day felt repetitive, and I had a really hard time actualizing my path forward, and things just didn't feel as ambitious anymore. I felt like I was losing track of where I wanted to go with things, these big ideas I had, the entire like romanticized idea of getting out there, grinding and achieving a lot. It just felt a little directionless at that time. There, there were other points in my life, like in my early 20s, where I was definitely feeling lost and a little aimless. And it took a good deal of introspection to really get to understand why and what I could do to change it. You're not alone. You're never alone in feeling that way. It's pretty natural, I'd say, and your life just might feel boring at times. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. I'm gonna talk about that feeling of boredom or feeling lost. And I wanna preface this by saying, I'm not a life coach, though I am a career coach, and I'll talk about that later. But I am a guy who did some stuff right, but also did a good bit wrong, and I like to think I learned from it. Now, I'm not saying these are clear-cut solutions by any means, but I'm gonna talk about some of the things I did to alleviate the feeling, and it's completely natural and valid to feel as though it's okay to feel like you're going through an existential crisis. There's nothing wrong with you for it. Your, your passions, your goals, you're just figuring out you, and keep in mind, the best version of you is still you. With that, I like to remind myself to strive for the most I possibly can. Strive for courage and new beginnings. Strive for intensity. Strive for purpose and strive for greater heights. Our life is what our thoughts make it. And that's a quote by Marcus Aurelius from Meditations. Sometimes your mind gets bogged down by all the things that are going on. You deal with a lot in your day to day. And when it comes down to it, it's something that you really gotta train. Like, it's it's definitely like a muscle to train. So whenever it does feel like my life is boring, I'm not having too much fulfillment from it, one of the things I like to do is I like to get uncomfortable. It's important to do that because that's how you grow. You get uncomfortable and you grow from it. Doing the thing that you think is challenging goes a long way. For example, the gym. Apart from the sheer challenge of it, you also get the satisfaction of making progress and being able to count up goals that you can accomplish, like hitting a new personal record on a lift or shaving a minute off of your mile run, et cetera, et cetera. You know, go climb that mountain, go push yourself. If nothing else, take yourself out to eat alone. Surprisingly, this can feel a little daunting. When I first started doing it, it, it was a little odd going out to eat by myself just because it would often feel like, huh, it's strange that I'm here by myself without having someone with me. But in reality, you're doing it for yourself, you're doing it to really just treat yourself and gather your mental resources. Once you get that initial taste of discomfort out of your head, you'll find that the experience of having a meal on your own feels pretty good. You can focus more on the meal, you can focus more on the ambiance, you can focus more on your thoughts, 
at the time. Really, it's pretty relaxing, and it's a good way to break a barrier. So just like that, keep pushing and testing your limits. In, the, in that vein, one of the things I like to tell myself is that the best kind of fun that you have is the fun you realize is fun after the fact. Like, if you go on a grueling hike, it's tough, but once you hit that summit, the endorphin rush is amazing. Then you'll have stories to tell later and a lot to reflect on. It'll just naturally feel more interesting and there's a sense of fulfillment in that. Another habit I like to follow to feel a little more fulfilled is I like to travel. So, you know, in the same vein as what I mentioned earlier, just take some time to ground yourself. It doesn't need to be anywhere extravagant. Just go out and get a coffee just by yourself. It's really easy to feel shut in and as if the world feels limited. And when this happens to me, I just like to go enjoy being out and about. Just the act of reminding myself that there's an abundance of lifestyles and people out there and a lot of different experiences you can gather. It's a good way to center yourself. It's a good way to actualize the situation that you're in. Creating experiences that you can reflect on in hindsight goes a long way. And that's one of the reasons I encourage everyone to travel. You learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about the world. That sensation of the world feeling small, it tends to go away. Another thing I like to do is I like to set physical, tangible goals, short term and long term. Now, I could get into details here, but I actually have another video on this. So if you all are interested, check out the video in the description. But just as an example, though, one big goal I have this year is hiking five 14er mountains. And another goal I have is to pick up new skills. You know, things like this. It's important to find something that you can do every day, something that you can prepare for every day. It gives you a sense of something to look forward to, you know? And then lastly, do the next thing that you love and you really care about. Even if it feels like something that's super out of your reach, just really out there, like a, like a goal that will take a long time to get to. Do things you love doing. Make time to do things you love doing. It's super important to know what you want and what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy. And don't do it because someone else wants you to do it. Do it because you want to do it. Now, I'm not a teacher, but I will give you a homework assignment. So in a journal, take five minutes and just write out all the things that you love and things that make you you. You'll find that just the idea of getting it all on paper, just being able to write out all these things, you have a lot that you can look forward to and you have a lot that you can bring yourself to care about on a regular basis. And seeing all that on paper, it can bring a sense of fulfillment. It could rekindle some excitement in that, oh, yeah, that's something I like doing. Okay, well, why haven't I done that in a while? Why not go do it? I had this realization the other day. I haven't been fishing in a while, so that's something I love doing. So probably going to go fishing sometime soon. And yeah, that'll be a good time. Something to keep in mind. If you do things with delayed gratification, you'll find more rewarding experiences coming out of it especially if they're things that you build up to and you can reflect on it with a sense of accomplishment. What's something you didn't even think you could do right now? Does it feel super out there? I mean, still, you can still take steps towards doing it. it. If you keep doing things that are interesting and add to your list of things that fulfill you, it'll, it'll give you something to look forward to and it'll keep things interesting. Now, are you in your early 20s and lost in your career? Think back to when you were a kid. What was your first dream job? Mine was to be an astronaut, and actually it was to be Spider-Man first, but then also an astronaut. Those things aren't mutually exclusive. I had a realization though, at my last job, I was really missing the drive for what my real end goal was, and that end goal is to go to space. So that's what drove me to the field of rocket engineering. It's just continuing to pursue those things I like doing on a fundamental level. When I first graduated college, I, like I had mentioned earlier in the video, I got my first job in Iowa, and it was as an electrical engineer, which honestly, it wasn't what I wanted to do long term. It was just a kind of a means to an end, really. And as I continued to explore and do stuff, realize what I love to do and what I think about on a regular basis, I ended up transitioning more and more towards the type of stuff that I want to do, which is work on large systems and work on ways to go to space. So with that, I will say it's okay to feel like your life is boring. It's okay to feel like the world feels small, but just know that you can achieve personal progress. You can overcome that hurdle of feeling bored. In my opinion, progress is like 
the number one key to fighting boredom. Also, something else I wanted to mention, building out your social relationships will go a long way. Really just having that set of connections that you can spend time with and, and feel comfortable around. That'll also go a long way. We're, as humans, we're naturally social creatures. We need that, we need the connection. We need to spend time with other people. Even if you're an introvert or extrovert, it's still very important. I highly encourage that y'all take the time to go spend time with folks. You know, hit up that friend that you haven't talked to in a while. See how they're doing. I promise it'll be worth it. And with that, you owe it to yourself to be great. Keep shooting for the stars. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button below. It'll help a lot. And if you're working to figure out a career transition plan or you're early in your career and you need help, my one-on-one -on -one coaching program is going to be available with spots very soon. The program is going to offer one-on-one -on -one calls, resume reviews, or even early career mentoring. If this is something that interests you and you're committed to taking steps to further your career, there's going to be a link in each video description to apply. I will see you all at the next video.